Well, hello, and welcome to Opal City Confidential, a Starman podcast, episode 54, Christmas in April. Uh, we'll be covering Starman, volume two, number 27, which is a lovely Christmas comic um, in uh, the first uh, early April. Um, it feels like winter, though, here in Richmond. And we'll also be covering the Starman, Golden Age Starman story from Adventure Comics 75, which is where we're going to start. So let's get to the pertinent data from Mike's Amazing World. If I can pull up the correct screen. Uh, Adventure Comics 75, covered date June 1942. Um, approximate on sale date April 29th, 1942. It was a 10-set comic book, a giant 64-pager. Uh, edited by Murray Boltonoff. The Starman story is called The Strange Case of the Luckless Liars. It's an 11-page comic. It is written by Gardner Fox. The artist is Jack Burnley. It has been reprinted once in the Golden Age Starman Archives, Volume 1, which is what I'm reading it. Um, the villain is Varden, uh, chairman of the Liars Club. No further appearance, uh, but he goes by the name The Ale in this, and I'm going to spoil things real quick. Let's... Um, the synopsis in Mike's Amazing World is Ted Knight is inducted into the Liars Club, where members tell each other lies for amusement. Tell, Ted tells the members he is Starman. The other members expand upon what they believe is Ted's lie, and each claims Starman tries to kill him. Later, Ted receives a call from Cliff Henry, who claims to have witnessed Starman kill Varden, the Liar Club's chairman. Starman becomes a hunted man, and each club member has... Has, lie, has his lie ironically come true. Starman finally clears himself of wrongdoing by providing that, proving that Barden is behind the murder chimps. He you had stolen money and was attempting to remove the only men who could pin the crime on him. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I kind of enjoyed most of these. Um, they're really quick, simple little Golden Age comics. Again, the Jack Burnley art is stunning. Um, there's some really great panels. I like it has, uh, you know, that open mini fast page, which shows him flying to rescue a guy in a plane. It says Starman by Jack Burnley, the strange case of the luckless liar. And it's got this great, uh, intro panel, the liars club where respectable citizens may tell whoppers to their hearts content without fear of censure yet out of the fantastic fibs come Fibs spun in a spirit of harmless fun. A cunning brain uh, weaves a web of evil that snares men's lives, fortunes, and fortunes and almost baffles the mighty man of night, Starman. Um, but, you know, it gets all these people in trouble. And, um, well, not in trouble. He tells the lies and then, you know, he's, fra um, he's framed for a murder. But I like the villain, the veil. He kind of looks like the Green Hornet. He's in a green suit with a... a um, instead of a mask over his eyes, it's a mask over his face, like a veil. He's wearing a veil. And there's just some great action in it. He's got Starman trying to save a guy in a plane. You see all the guys um, being murdered, all framed, and you see how it happens uh, by putting just neat little tricks. Neat little tricks. One's in a bad, pl a dodgy plane. The other um, shoots a gun into a fireplace and then puts the, the gun down on the table and it catches fire and it causes the gun to fire. Um, the, all the time, the real bad guy's just laughing. You know, he didn't even have to kill him. Um, but Starman arrives and saves him, realizes what's going on. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's just, he, it's, a, it's a really nicely paced story. And it ends up with it being the guy that was supposedly framing him. It's just a quick little story. These are fun. Um, you can find them online. Um, some places... But if you can find a cheap co copy of the Golden Age Starman Archives, because I really recommend it. I'm almost done. There's only one more issue in here, I think. And I will be moving on to the next volume. Yes, there's only one more left in this heart volume. And then I'll be uh, heading over to the Emil Jennings Starman, which is very different um, artistically. Uh, I really like it. I've only read one or two. And I'm looking to read all those, but we'll also have some Justice Society uh, in there too. But that was a quick little, uh, quick little one. Let us get the pertinent data to the main event, which is Starman Volume Two, Number Twenty Seven, uh, cover date February nineteen ninety seven. Uh, 
on sale date December 11th, 1996, cover price $2.25, page count 32, editor, the amazing, one of the greats of all time, Archie Goodwin, uh, it is titled Christmas Night, Night K-N-I-G-H-T, play on words, 22 pages, um, features Starman, this has been reprinted in The Wicked Inclination, trade back 1998. Starman Omnibus Hardcover Volume 2 in 2009. Starman Omnibus Volume 2 trade back 2012. And the Star Pen Commendium Volume 1, which is what I'm reading it in 2021. Uh, there is no synopsis or really any notes in uh, that, but there uh, is a little bit of uh, this extra that this is a Christmas tale and it features shade. Um, Jack Knight, of course, The Shade, uh, Disco Starman, Michael Thomas, uh, Ted Knight, the original Starman, the Adair family consisting of Barry Adair, Clarence Adair, Hope Adair, Mason Adair, Matt Adair, Faith Adair, Clarence's wife, um, Charity, um, Jack and uh, Mason's friend. Um, it takes place in Opal City. It's was It's been reprinted in Wicked Inclinations Volume 2. Um, uh, Omnibus 2, both versions, and um, as I said, Hope, Faith, and Charity are at the Christmas party, which it will come up. There's no synopsis in either site, but basically, this is... Oh, let me give you the creative team. I'm just a silly fool. Creative team for this is James Robinson, guest penciler Stephen y- Yowell, um, or Ewell. It's Y E O W E L L. I am just I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Inker W P Von Grabadger, letterer Bill Oakley, colorist Pat Garahay. Um, it starts with its Christmas dinner at Clarence and um, Hope O'Day's. Is it Hope? I'm sorry, I've got I'm get these all confused. Um, because it, the the gag of having Hope. Oh yeah, it's Faith. I'm sorry, it's Faith. Hope is the daughter. Faith is the mom. And they're having they're just having a conversation about being ready for Christmas dinner and that Jack has been invented. And it's just lovely. The first almost the whole three pages is you getting to see the relationship between Faith and Clarence, the mo- the the matriarch and patriarch of the O'Dare family right now. And it's nice and it's a great conversation. It's it's just I don't think you'd see this nowadays. I just love this. And then we get to Jack is on his way. He's got to pick up some stuff. And he's thinking, got a book. I'm late. Shouldn't have watched that movie. Christmas movies are on every year and the same. But Alistair Sim, you can't beat him. I agree. Huge Alistair Sim um, Christmas Carol. That's my go-to for me personally. Um, And then number two in this household would be Muppet. But but he's going to make some punch. But he's flying and he, something catches his eye and he lands, and there is a sad cr- uh, Santa Claus is crying on a park bench, and that's where the title card is, Christmas Night. And you find out from Jack that he's met a man, he's met a guy, he's homeless, um, he doesn't, he's lost his clothes, he he does he does the Chris Santa gig every year to make some money, um, and he's homeless, and he left his clothing in the department store changing room when he was playing Santa, and the janitors threw it out thinking they were rubbish. Um, but he's lost everything, and he tells his story. He's like, I wasn't always like this. I was a businessman once. I had a home and money, and then my wife and son were killed in a car accident. There didn't seem much point to working after that. I began to drink. One night I fell asleep with a cigarette. There was a fire. I got out alive, but everything I had destroyed. The house had already been foreclosed on at the time, so wasn't much, such, wasn't such a loss. All my photos, mementos of my family, that was the loss. The locket around my neck, a photo of them, the only photo I've been, the only photo. I've been in dire times since, but never once thought to selling or pawning, to think of selling. Pond, uh, think of pawning or selling it. How'd you lose it? And, he'd been, and he says he's been robbed. So Jack goes, hey, come on, Santa. Let's go find it. Great superhero. Small cry. I love it when a superhero does small. And then the family all starts coming over. Um, Barry's first. No date, his mom teases. And Matthew shows up. He brought a cake. And she's like, you've never... Why should you mind? Why? Uh, what? He, Matthew comes in and he goes, Faith, I brought a cake. Um, 
Well, now she's the, God. And when I said matriarch and patriarch, I meant Clarence is the oldest brother and they're just the head of the household. They're not the parents. Um, so Faith, uh, Matt comes in and goes, Faith, I brought a cake. I hope you don't mind. She goes, why should I mind? But I must say, it's not like you've ever used to bring anything to the family gathering. In fact, half the time you didn't show. I've changed. I want to be in a dare again. Well, I don't know what that means exactly, but um, may I, may all your wishes is ha wishes happen, and you hate. Um, Hope comes in, um, and the the girls start talking. Then we cut back to the Santa, and Jack. Um, they pay somebody some money to give information where the locket is. When another homeless person. And then Mason shows up without his date. He just he was thought he was gonna ask charity, and she didn't. Oh no, you know his, they don't know her name. He's saying you know he has a friend, and he thought, you know he'd ask her, but then he he realized he was foolish, and he didn't ask her. Well, and you know, so they all go in. We cut, and you know, it's just all these little. We cut away to a single. It's a two panel single page. Um. Of Jack and the Santa, and you know just the. It's just kind of I like these soft, heartwarming things. He's, you know, they're just talking. Santa's going, "You're grateful." So don't worry about it. Imagine you have places to be. He asks. He says to Jack, and Jack goes, "Oh yeah." And we come back. Next up is two more star, two starmen show up at the party. It's Michael Thomas and Ted, and right behind them is Charity, and which makes Faith laugh because, because um, Charity goes, "What's so funny?" My name's Faith. We have help over there, and now the trio is complete, and welcome, and happy Christmas, Charity. And Mason's blushing. It looks like he's blushing. And they're just having a nice Christmas time. We cut to Jack, and he's uh, threatening a guy with the star staff. It's the, one of the guys that robbed the Santa, and he's crying. You know, they're just all hungry. they are all been pushed to their, their utmost. So Jack gives him 100 bucks and says, feed everybody around there. And the guy says it. And that's, you know, this is, it's not fisticuffs. It's just the simple task of... A da Jack helping a down and out guy on Christmas, a Santa, but a down and out guy. Uh, Shade comes by and gives them all a um, a gift, gives the O'Dare family a gift, a signed first edition of a Christmas Carol. Uh, says someone should read it, but he doesn't stick around. Next goes up is Jack is fighting some bad guys. Um, uh, they're robbing the pawnbroker where the necklace was pawned, and the pawn poor pawnbroker's been hurt. And Jack is like, you know, uh, Jack goes, I don't know CPR. Can uh, because he's bad. Jack's knocked out both the bad guys, but the pawnbroker has been shot. And Jack's like, I, I don't know CPR. Call the police, Santa. I'll do what I can. And then the Santa goes, I know CPR. Come on, quick. Help me. Put your hands on his chest and push when I tell you. Are you sure? I was a medic in Korea. Jack's like, you're a veteran. I'm not the only homeless vet on the street tonight, Jack. Why, be, why are you shocked? Anyway, there isn't time. Listen, do what I say and, and do it when I tell you. And then we cut ahead. The, you know, they're leaving the hospital and, you know, they've saved the guy's life. They're all happy. The Santa got, he has his um, necklace he's in, and a few bucks. Well, he offers him a few bucks and he says no. And he goes, I have my necklace. That's all I need. And then I'll say goodbye and happy Christmas, Jack, from the bottom of my heart. And to you, Santa. Good luck. I hope you get back. You get you. I hope you get on your feet. I hope so too. And by the way, the name's Pete. And then we just have a page of Jack standing in the snow. We see him full. Then we see a torso and headshot. And then just his eyes. It's him thinking. We cut back to the party. And then Jack shows up with Pete. And he has a nice Christmas. And it ends with a very nice toast. Um, Clarence saying tonight for smiles and laughter. Michael goes, good food, good friends. And Jack says, and goodwill to everyone. Merry Christmas. It was just like, you know, we just finished this big story. Uh, next uh, issue is A Time's Past, which I'm excited about. It's a disco. It's a Michael story. Um, and me and Dave will be talking about it. Excited, excited, excited. Um, but in this, they're really sweet. Uh, Stephen Yule's art is wonderful. Uh, Steve Yules. I, I, I'm trying to remember what I know him from. Um, uh, I know he... Oh, okay, so he did some JSA, some Batman Returns. Okay. 
That's where I know him. I just, I, I, I thought it was someone else when I saw the art, but I really love the art. I love the story. Everybody's in it. It's a nice little palette cleanse, as I like to say, after one big arc and before we get into the other. And the stuff coming up is we got Disco Starman. We've got the, um, the Return of Bibbo. And then I'll be covering the Shade miniseries. And then we get into Infernal Devices arc. So, but this one is just a really nice one. Just really simple, beautiful art. Just just a joy. A nice Christmas story. It was really fun to read it. All right, folks, that's it. Um, you'll notice there was a gap. Uh, I will do these as often as I can. Uh, I will probably do a week where I have three or four or a week where I have one or I'll take a week off and then do three. I'm just going to do as best as I can with work. I've got some PT. I'm taking a week off of staycation just to kind of decompress and I'll probably do a bunch of recorded then or at least get some out. But I'll keep up with Starman, and um, I've got other things planned. I'm also probably um, going to just jump around on some Marvel stuff on the weekends when I can. Um, this is going up late sa uh, late on a Saturday, and tomorrow I will probably do another episode and post it on Sunday to kind of get caught up. I may or may not. This may come out on a Tuesday like normal. All right, folks. Well, as always, thank you. And please be safe, be smart, please be kind to one another, and read some comments.